when I joined, let's say Zepto, I, I didn't know it's going to be a big business. I pretty much got lucky there. But the skill was that I knew that if this business sticks around, most problem statements will be data science problems. That was the bet I took. The initial days are hard for me. iOS users are being demanded more bucks than Android users for some certain orders. Is it true? You can bring revolution, but there is no business if nobody's willing to pay for it. Quick commerce is a pretty competitive industry. Can you tell us one strategy on how to retain customers for the long run? The goal for every customer facing business is to provide the best service or best products, whatever, right? And in this case, I think the market is still figuring out what that means. If someone has to start their journey with data science, what advice would you give them? I would pick some areas that I'm interested in. Put our hands together and give a warm welcome to Mr. Abhinavan. How do I approach the problems, right? It's pretty much data science, data everything, so... I forward the link, please. Uh, I'll forward to one person. So my first question to you is, how you got into data science and what project did you work on? Yeah, so I got into it because I like stats, right? Uh, <clears throat> and. I also happened to watch Moneyball at that time when I was in college. So both of them coincided and uh, I was, I think Kaggle also came out, I just started playing around with it. So I don't exactly remember the problem statement, but I started sub putting submissions. But I think there is one uh, probably called uh, Forest Classification or something. It's University of California Irvine's data set on uh, how to classify different parts of the reserve or something. So I think, yeah, that was the first one. We as students think about startups. So we think about bringing revolution in the industry. But often it is evident that every startup needs not to bring that revolution, but instead businesses that works on improving the product's quality as per the customer needs have uh, sustained pretty well. So what's the notion about the startup world that you think people glamorize, but it is overrated? Yeah, so you can bring revolution. There is no problem with it, but there is no business if nobody is willing to pay for it, right? So, which I think is the indigenous kind of like India problem, right? Because you cannot, uh, even if you bring the most revolutionary stuff, right? Uh, the propensity to pay for people is kind of less, which is why they don't make good businesses. They might make good technical solutions or achievements, whatever, but they don't make good uh, business decisions, right? So, a business goal is not to bring revolution. A business goal is to identify a gap in the market and see if they can offer a service or a product and charge money for it. So sir, what's your take on luck versus skill factor to gain success in the tech world? Be honest. Yeah, so it's a combination of the two, right? Uh, it's kind of, again, I go back to the example of poker, right? So in a single hand, luck can play a big role, whether you win that hand or not. But in the long run, if uh, it's basically your skill which determines whether you're, you know, how your trajectory of profit looks like. So I think that holds true for tech world also, right? Uh, it's a mix of both, right? Uh, but of course, in the short run, you know, you might have something luckily playing out in your favor. You might be in the right place at the right time, right? I, when I joined, let's say Zepto, right? I didn't know it's going to be a big business. I pretty much got lucky there, right? Uh, but the skill was that I knew that if this business sticks around, then most problem statements will be data science problems. So that was the bet I took. But I didn't know whether it will survive or not, but that was the luck part. So whenever my mother asks me to bring vegetables at the last minute, either I miss out on a few items or I'm late to deliver those to her. So how does hyper local apps leverage data science to cater to cater uh, that to cater the promise to uh, deliver the products in 10 minutes while managing both the inventory as well as uh, the logistics? Yeah, so they typically need to plan for all of this, right? Uh, now, in our case, uh, typically we used to plan one day ahead, uh, you know, in terms of the supply chain, right? Despite that, there will be some gaps on the real time basis, which you obviously used to handle through either controlling traffic, so you can adjust for that. Uh, but yeah, typically you need to plan for it. And uh, the planning is obviously a completely automated systems, which do that. And then you tweak and play around with it to adjust for changing patterns and demand. So, what does machine learning play in analyzing customer purchase and browsing history to personalize their shopping experience? Yeah, so you have, uh, you know, all these companies have large user base, right, which is 50, 61 crore kind of population. 
uh, and you have products in a, let's say in quick commerce or some other apps right you have 10000 or maybe even up to 1 lakh in case of e-commerce so that's a lot of combination of things that people could be purchasing and uh, you obviously can't analyze it humanly in which case you would want to crunch it through data or machine learning right so that both you can understand the patterns and then you can you also use the product predictive nuances to see if i can recommend something the right way right now the question is why use it right because if i am able to recommend the right products to the people they might end up buying those products which means increase revenue for the business right uh, and in let's say quick commerce case if you have a larger cart it means better unit economics for the business how does predictive analysis helps to forecast the customer needs as well as uh, while maintaining the wear of stockings yeah so uh, you know when festivals and all happen the demand the kind of buying that happens changes right so you do have data from last past year you also have search data and stuff right so you can use them to kind of infer that this is how the pattern might look like thereby you can predictor of forecast right ki you know they might have want something different typically these companies have a hub and spoke kind of a supply chain hub is where you have one warehouse which holds the city's inventory and then the products move to dark stores that's pretty much how you set up your inventory right and all of these companies what the way they do it is whatever is the predicted forecast or predicted out or, uh, inventory that you need to subtract from what is already there in the dark store the delta is what they move through the day so how would you target to acquire the customer who are not tech savvy like as a teenager i would go on an app and i would order directly but seeing my parents they would either go to the local shop and do the orders so how should uh, how are you targeting this customers uh, currently it's not a big concern for these businesses that if they capture all all the market including people who let's say do not a believer if you talk about parents right uh, if, you know at least my parents are retired so they for them they generally don't need the product immediately they're willing to go down purchase take their time and all so that's probably not the audience as well so i think the businesses are better off just focusing on customers who they already have the need for it and serving them better uh, rather than try to acquire customers who may not necessarily see the uh, business advantage or use case so we have seen reels on instagram where uh, certain customers complain about that ios users are being demanded more bucks than android users for some certain orders so is it true and if that is true then then why this injustice yeah i don't think it's true uh, i think it's more complicated than that uh, and honestly if you guys want to like really verify it i would recommend actually collecting some 10000 data points across different situations try to see if you can normalize for all the different variability and then see if that's true but i think at least based on one data point we can't infer that uh, it's the case uh, if someone has to start uh, the journey with data science like what would it, what advice would you give them to yeah i would uh, i would pick some areas that i'm interested in and i will start working on those problems and then work backwards right like whatever tools i need to learn or whatever things i need to learn i'll just pick up as needed right and that's true for data science whether that's true for any other tech thing that you do right uh the benefit of working with tech is the feedback loop is fast your learning is fast if your feedback loop is fast right if i talk about electrical engineering which is what i studied if you had to test the hardware right you had to buy them you had to get them you had to set up physically right and uh, sometimes they you can if you don't set the wires correctly and all they might just go you know kaput and stuff right so in so the advantage of software and digital stuff is that your feedback loop is fast and there is no risk of making a mistake right if your code goes wrong if you're practicing it nobody comes out and says you're failed or something right so the cost of failure is very less and if you succeed the payoff is very high so in which case you ideally want to iterate very fast and do a lot of things so whatever lets you to keep taking actions and keep trying a lot of things uh, to answer your question i will pick some 3 4 problems i'm interested in find the data sets start working on them and keep pushing myself to be improving upon it